Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Florida Boy. This, yep, you guessed it. It's the easy. It's my uh, my EDC channel. You made it. You're here. Uh, so today we're gonna look at the Artesian Cutlery Sea Snake. Let's get into it. I really had to push to get the words out. I don't know. I don't want to just, it's like my brain was like sea snake, but my mouth was like, meh. So <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully that does not kind of foreshadow the way this, the way this video is going to go. Okay. So let's talk about this knife. Uh, this was in a little video not too long ago. We have not done a full review of this knife. I have been carrying it. I've done a little bit of a mixture of carry on this. I've done, um, you know, neck knife. I've done bag knife. I've done, I put my, uh, my Merc titanium clip on here, pocket carried it. I've done a bunch of little things with it just to see how I like it. This is him in his actual form. This is him in his base form before he goes Super Saiyan and you put some kind of belt clip on there. So how much does this guy run? Uh, about 40 bucks. You can pick them up on, you know, Amazon, Blade HQ, yada, yada, yada. Uh, about $40, about be what you'd spend. Um, and I got to say so far, I like it. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely a good knife. It definitely does everything it's supposed to. It does come with this very nice little Kydex sheath. It is a taco style sheath and we have our little rivet holes here on the side. So you can add belt clips and attachments and everything else you want to do with it. And you can see down here, we also have a drain hole so that if you're carrying it knife up and you get some water in there or something, it is going to drain out the bottom and your knife is not going to be sitting in a puddle of water. So this lives up to his name, Sea Snake. You could definitely take this out on the sea. I don't know if I recommend it. The blade steel is ARRPM9 and um, basically a uh, fancy schmancy G2, D2, bleh, D2, there we go. Um, just to give you an idea real quick, if so the pocket clip, I don't have it on here. We're not gonna do take all the time that it needs to put the pocket clip on there, but if you had a pocket clip on this guy and you were to slide her in a pocket, um, your pocket clip would probably stop right about there. My Mamert clip does. And that is about the length that you have sticking up out of the pocket. So if you are going to pocket carry this, it is a little big. Um, that definitely is not my favorite term or my favorite um, way to carry this. In terms of carryment. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Couldn't save it. Um, so we'll do really quick. Oh, come on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I thought I was going to have the hiccups there for a second. Crisis averted. Um, so this is 6.75. So six and three quarters inches. I realized that I'm way off center there. So there you go. You can see it is pretty good size knife. Um, in terms of cutty cuttiness, um, I probably need to strop mine. <laughs> or yeah i think i need to uh give my blade my edge a little bit of a little bit of love you can see we're not getting super clean cuts here um which is okay uh it's, that's my fault um if i kind of saw it it'll cut through um i have been carrying it i have been using it i do like to use fixed blades for work um so this this has seen a mini a boxes <laughs> a mini 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 boxes so here we go. There we go. Let's take a look. Take a looky loo here. So we do have a slight polish on the blade here. And um, it is a satin finish. See that? See, we've got kind of a flat grind going on there. That's not a hollow, right? Mm, looks flatty. Might be hollow ish. Um, but so far I think it's a pretty good knife. Um, these are artesian cutlery or artisan cutlery. Um, I don't know if it says it on here. Does it say made in China? Yeah, there it is. There you go. Made in China. Uh, I was just going to show you the marking before I said it. And I never like people to think I'm assuming. <laughs> so this thing does come in a few different colors. Get this little dealio away. There we go. Uh, a few different colors, uh, but the Warncliffe style blade, um, I'm a huge fan of Warncliffe. If you haven't watched any of my videos, Warncliffe, Tanto, Tonto, um, I think all of those are like the best EDC blade shapes that you can have. 
If we look at the finger troll here, we have plenty of room to choke up on this. Um, oversized is great. I love it. Um, and the jimping on the back feels pretty good. It's, it's definitely aggressive enough. It's not one of those that's not aggressive enough that you don't feel like you're touching anything. You can definitely choke up and feel pretty safe there. Uh, this style blade also gives you plenty of room. You could do some precision cuts if you needed to. You can go up pretty high on here. Um, I, overall, the blade shape, the ergonomics of this are excellent. Excellent. And I've had no issues with the Kydex sheath. Kydex sheath has been great. Um, uh, overall, this has been a great knife. Uh, I didn't, this wasn't one of those where I did research and I planned on buying it. Um, I did a trade with my buddy Z Wolfgang. You'll probably see him around in the comments every now and then. Um, he just sent me, a um, sent me a message one day and asked if I had any knives I wanted to trade. And, uh, yeah, we swapped some knives, sent me this and a Tucson and a Tucson flashlight, Tucson knife and flashlight. And, um, I, yeah, I, I really, I had never really even looked into this, um, this knife and I'm pretty happy that I have it. Uh, I've enjoyed carrying it. It's actually a great utility knife. Um, if you are not one of those that likes to carry an actual utility knife, uh, something like this will work out great. Cutting edge is excellent. Um, you can see that this has definitely got some use. Uh, my edge uh, doesn't feel rolled. It's just a little dull. <laughs> I've been using it though. I, I, I've been using it. So um, let's get a weight. Let's do that. Let's, let's get on top of that. So without the sheath. 2.3. Oh. Oh. Hold on. My desk is angry at me. Too much stuff. Uh, with the sheath, 2.9. So yeah, sheath. Sheath is 0.6. There you go. Get this out of the way. Uh, yeah, so I I like it. I kind of dig it. Um, it does make a pretty cool neck knife. I think I think it's a little big for a neck knife unless you are <laughs> literally out on you know out fishing or something. Then maybe it's better off as a neck knife. But uh, I I think it's a little big for that for just normal everyday carry. Um, it wouldn't be my first choice for a neck knife on normal normal carry. Going you know going out and doing things camping hunting fishing stuff like that. This this would be great. Um, the the Warren Cliff style blade like I said. Super, super, super good for anything utilitarian. Let's go see if we can get a look at these scales real fast. Wow, there we go. Okay, and you can see the tang. I mean, this is, it's weird when I hold this. I, I almost want to, <laughs> it feels like I'm about to press a button lock is what that, what these domed head screws feel like. Um, I don't know if, yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll just do it this way. Yeah, see how they kind of protrude off the top? They're kind of domed. Whenever you run your finger over this, just holding it, um, if you're not paying attention, you're going to think it's a button lock. <laughs> and I've done that a couple times. I know that sounds really, really stupid. But, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, it happens. Um, but enough on the blade enough on the blade overall shape um the g10 is excellent the g10 is very smooth um it definitely almost has zero texture uh it, it does have enough texture for you to hold it um but that g10 is is extremely smooth i don't know if you can hear my fingernails on it whereas if we did something like um i, I don't know uh here's here's a rat model one so yeah, there's not a lot of texturing on this G10. It's very, very smooth. Um, you could probably you know, probably add your own texturing, probably sand it a little. I'd probably, probably do it. But, um, you know, this wasn't going to be a super long review. This is a small knife, and um, I, I enjoy it. I like it, and it's a pretty good price. I mean, it's like 40 bucks. Not really, really not bad at all. Uh, I will put some links in the description below if you'd like to check it out just a little bit. They, they pretty much have it everywhere. So I, I might just do an Amazon link just because that's like the most universal in my opinion. A lot of people buy off Amazon. 
Um, Amazon has it in this configuration with the black and satin. Uh, they also have a black with black PVD coating on the blade, which I think would look super sick because then it would be very, very similar to my pyrite. So if you could imagine this knife with all black PVD, uh, that's what it would look like. I think that would be super sick because... I, I wasn't, I, when I opened that box and I saw the all black pyrite, my wife got it for me. I was kind of like, mm, that's so tactical, but, uh, actually, I actually really, really like it. Um, it's very, very slick, very John wicky. <laughs> so yes, you can get this on the all black PVD. Uh, it also comes in a desert tan with the satin finish on the blade. And it does come in the green G10 and satin that I was talking about earlier. Um, and that's, I mean, that's, that's about the skinny of it. All the variations are going to come with the AR RPM nine. Uh, like I said, if you don't know a lot about that, uh, RPM nine, it's basically a powder, it's a powder form steel. And, uh, I would say it's a, I like it better than D two. I would say it's better than D two. Unless you're talking about like CPM D two, which is like American made D two. And then that's, that's a whole different category, but just standard D2 versus RPM nine. I'd rather have AR RPM nine. I've never rusted this stuff, so I can, uh, I can give a better, you know, <laughs> a better, a better, uh, recommendation for that. Um, that speaking of the AR RPM nine HRC 59 to 61, um, it's a proprietary steel. So we just have to take it that that is, where it's supposed to be, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Since no one else uses it, we just have to take their word that 60 or, you know, 59 to 61 is going to be like the sweet spot. So is what it is. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, my artesian cutlery, uh, my Arroyo was the same steel. Um, I've had, I've had a few knives that are the same steel. Uh, pyrite is, I think pyrite's also the same. Yes. RPM nine. Um, the echo is AR RPM nine. Uh, they make a lot, they make a lot of knives with it. And all those knives are usually kind of like some of their flat, like, like the pyrite. This is absolutely a flagship knife. Um, this is kind of one of those, uh, evergreens where it's just excellent, excellent knife. Um, I mean, you're going to be hard pressed to buy or find someone that has a pyrite that, that just doesn't like it. Um, and I'm on the boat saying that I think, I think the echo might take the cake. Uh, if they made a premium version of this echo, I would absolutely buy it. I'd love to see this with some titanium and, uh, maybe, mm, yeah, maybe like, M, maybe some M390. Um, there's a lot of other steels they could put on here. Uh, I'd probably still, you probably keep the ARPM nine and just give me like some titanium scales and I'd probably still buy it as long as the price was okay. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I digress that, that blade steel. Excellent. So if you're, if you're worried about it, don't, don't worry about it. It, it is, it is excellent. Um, and I, uh, last thing here, I didn't really talk about it because I don't know if my camera is going to pick this up. I don't know if you can see that maker's mark that's on there. Do you see the, the M E Mike Emler, um, is a military vet. That's your designer. Uh, I don't, I don't know a lot of other information on that other than it is a good design. Very, very good design. We're not going to take the scales off. Um, I, I would show you underneath the scales, but I don't have my screwdriver set out for some reason. It's in my bag, but it is a full tang and you do have some milling under there. You got three modular circular holes <laughs> take some weight so uh i think that's about it i don't think there's really anything else we need to um really like cover on this knife i mean if you wanted to know kind of the the size of this here's a pm2 um we'll put a pie right next to it there you go i'm doing this at the end of the video i usually do this at the beginning but uh i don't know i'm feeling kind of feeling kind of backwards today spicy uh, then we'll just throw up the rat model one. There you go. Just give you an idea on the size. Um, if you're, <laughs> we'll, we'll throw out one, one really big one. Here's my MSI there. There you go. There's the granddaddy of the knives. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a good size. It's not, it's not little by any means, but it's definitely not large. Um, I think, 
I think the pyrite gives it the best gives it the best comparison. You see it's almost pocket knife size, which for a neck knife that's a little big, a little on the large side. Especially if you, you know, you've you've uh neck knifed a uh, SE Zula or anything like that. This is gonna be a little large. But for the price, it's worth buying, checking out, picking up. Um the only thing I've noticed so far with this, uh complaint wise, let's talk about a complaint is edge retention on this specific model has not been great. Um, I do find myself dropping pretty often. Um, and I mean, any any knife that you can strop and get back to good, like good cutting edge is, is good. It's good steel. It's good design. It's good hardness. But um, I, I, I kind of have to do it pretty often with, with this guy um versus you know like the pyrite and the echo it's the same blade steel but i feel like i have to do it less i i don't i don't know um it, it could be it could just be me cutting down more boxes uh, with the the neck I, I don't know it's probably something i'm doing i'm just not putting my finger on it but um yeah that's like my main complaint uh, aside from that everything else about this knife is pretty excellent pretty excellent for a 40 dollar knife so, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We're 15 minutes into the knife review. And, uh, I think, I think, I think we did it some justice. I think this is worth checking out. Uh, especially if you can pick it up on sale. I know right now it's still like 40 at the time of this recording, it's $40 on Amazon. That's normal price. Um, I haven't really watched them a lot, so I don't know if it goes on sale, but if it does, I have a lot of stuff that I have like, um, notifications set up for. So when I see really good deals, I try to post them on my community page on the channel. So if you're not following the channel, you should you should do that. You should subscribe because I I do try to you know give you the best deals and drops like in my community page. So I I don't it doesn't look like I post a lot there, but I do, I try not to just muddy it up with with um you know deals that aren't really great deals or just a little bit of deals. I try to do like the really really good stuff like the bangers. So um anyways you should do that. You should subscribe. You'll like the channel. I promise you found it. You made it here. If you're this far into the video, you'll like the rest of the stuff I do. I promise. I think I promise. I shouldn't promise. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. I've already told you, you should totally subscribe. So I won't, I won't kick a dead horse. Um, thank you again so much for stopping by. Catch you on the next one.